Oh, what's up, boys? So everybody's been through a dry spell at some point. I'm going to tell you a story about how I overcame a dry spell I had in the past. And if you're wondering, what do I mean by dry spell? I mean a dry spell of pussy. We all want it, but not all of us can get it. So I definitely couldn't get it a couple of years ago. I remember coming back from doing a pretty badass job. I was a forest firefighter for the government, dude. I flew around the country put out fires in the bush, pissed on trees, humped bears, you know, did all the crazy outdoor wild man stuff. I was living the life for a bit. I had nice long flow and I was a bit of a weirdo. Other people at work didn't really like me because I just talked about random shit that they didn't really care about. But anyways, I came back home and I just spent months living in the bush. So I was pretty socially retarded, right? I hadn't talked to my friends in months. I didn't really stay in contact with a lot of them because I was just constantly going without internet and shit. And uh, I came back and the first thing I wanted to do was like any logical man, get some pussy. Oh God, like when you're in the bush for months at a time with no puss, dude, it's tough. There's a couple different things I did in order to get out of this dry spell. And I'm gonna share them with you in this video because whatever situation you find yourself in, maybe you didn't just go and hang out in the bush for a couple months, but maybe it's been a while since you've been with a girl. I'm going to teach you the fastest way to get access to girls and hopefully get into a fulfilling relationship. But at the very least, just break that dry spell, bro. Get some pussy. Or as my coworkers used to say, get your dick wet. Anyways, let's begin. So the very first thing that you need to do is rush into things in one way, but not the other. Here's what I mean by that. Most guys, when they're desperate for pussy, they just do like the most stupid stuff ever. They give way too much attention. They're willing to like buy shit for girls, do their homework. They like fail all tests. As soon as a girl shows interest in them, they make themselves available every single day of the week. Basically, they show desperation to the girls. What I want you to do is have this same desperation, but don't show it to the girls. Just keep it to yourself, okay? And here's what I mean by this. Come up with some kind of agreements to yourself. Like, I will approach girls every single day. Like, let's say you run into a girl, right? You meet her at a coffee shop. You guys are sitting next to each other. She's on a computer. Oh, what are you working on? Oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. I have a friend that does that. And she's like, oh, what about you? And you're like, ah, blah, blah, blah. And then you guys, you know, hang out for a couple minutes. And then you're like, actually, I got to get going. But uh, here, take my number and we can grab coffee sometime. She's like, yeah, sure. And then you go home and you just imagine you and her together and her big boobs on your face. And you just, oh, oh, and you have one of those dreams, right? We've all been there. I do this still. But anyways, that is what most guys, fuck man, what am I talking about? I totally lost my trail of thought. Ugh. What the fuck? Titties, come. No, oh, okay, anyways, anyways. Okay, sorry, remember what I was gonna say now. So that's what you would like to do, meet a girl like that, right? So let's say you go on a date with her now and she's like, oh, like, so you come to this coffee shop often and you're like, no, actually, I just spent the last five months jerking off on the foreheads of squirrels in the forest. And I came back and I had a massive dry spell. My cock's been dry for months. So what I said was I'm going to spend four hours a day cold approaching girls in public settings like grocery stores and coffee shops and parks and make it look like it was accidental. We bumped into each other until finally I meet a girl that will say yes to me and then we go out on a date and hopefully I pay for ice cream and she sucks my cock in the backseat of my mom's car. She's gonna look at you and be like, what the fuck, dude? You don't tell her that. You don't tell her that you're desperate. You don't tell her that you're doing an hour of cold approaches a day. You don't tell her any of that stuff. However, you take that desperation and tell it to yourself. You go, okay, I want to get girls. So I'm gonna make sure I spend one hour per day putting myself in an environment where there are girls, okay? Don't tell them or let them know you're desperate. Just be desperate to yourself, all right? Now, if you do this long enough, one thing you're going to pick up is you're going to learn where the girls are, where to go in your city, what time of day to go. I used to go to this bookstore on weeknights and there'd be a couple girls there, nothing crazy. But on weekends, it was like a circus, bro. Everybody in the area was coming there to read books, get coffee with a friend, go there, work on her assignments or whatever. Like there was just constantly girls there. So I'm like, OK, Saturdays, 10 a.m. till like 12 p.m. I know where to go, okay? Same with downtown. Which brunch areas are all the girls going to meet with their other girlfriends to get brunch at? What parks do they have like yoga class? Where are the festivals at? Where are like the, uh, you know, just areas where there's lots of girls? 
So in order to find out where they are, you have to spend a little bit of time finding them. You have to spend some time each week going out of your way to find out where they are. Once you know that they're there, then you start approaching them. Now, you might be wondering, oh, fuck, well, what do I say to them? I get it. It's tough. So before you do that, go and talk to guys. Every single guy skips this step. They're like, oh, there's a girl. I want to go talk to her, but I just get in my own head and I'm nervous. And I don't want to say anything to her. And then I'm like, did you approach a guy first? And they're always like, oh, no. Why would I do that? And I was like, because if you talk to a couple guys, you get loose, you get warmed up. You're more used to a ta- approaching strangers and starting conversations with them. Then when you talk to a girl, it's so much easier. But guys don't think that way, okay? So that's the second step. Talk to some guys. So you got that so far? Go around, find out where the girls are. Actually put effort into it, okay? Don't expect to just walk into a supermarket and every aisle there's a baddie, okay? If you go to certain stores there are, like those organic stores, the goodness me's and, you know, uh, what's the one in the States where they just have healthy shit all the time? I forget what it's called, but... There are good spots where you can find girls in grocery stores. But again, what you guys usually do is you spend like one hour on a Thursday afternoon where it's raining outside and you drive around in your car and you pull over on the side of the road next to a park and there's nobody there. And you're like, oh, well, I guess it's back to dating apps for me. Like you fucking knuckleheads. You're not putting in enough effort scouting to find out where girls are. That's the most obvious one. Okay. And if you really want to game the system, Go to a bar or a nightclub because there are literally dozens of girls there because that's what attractive girls do. They want to be seen by others. So they go to bars and nightclubs. Go there on weekends. Go to the patios where they open up early. Well, I don't have anybody to go with. Good. Go there and make friends with other guys that are there. Go and meet a girl there by yourself. Put yourself in that situation and see how you can handle it. Most guys are afraid to do that. That's why they never go out. You don't even have to drink. You just have to be able to talk to people. Drinking helps, but again, this is just ending this dry spell as fast as possible, okay? Because now you're in an environment where there's also girls that are looking for potentially hookups, one night stands, right? One night stand implies you guys never knew each other and you might not ever know each other afterwards. And if you're looking for something more serious, you're probably going to want my advice earlier about going to all these different locations so you can kind of be around other girls. But to end this dry spell, you want to be within proximity of girls. That's the most important thing. Next thing you want to do is talk to a bunch of guys to warm yourself up. That way you're used to talking to guys and it's not such a big deal to go and approach girls because it's just like approaching a guy, except it's got boobs and a pussy and a cute face. Okay. Next thing you need to do is do a lot of approaches. And I don't mean ask every girl for their number, but make the approach, start the conversation and based on the vibe, then you can ask for the number. What most guys do is they try to go for the number every single time. There'll be a girl that I'm talking to that I clearly know is just waiting for the conversation to end because she doesn't want to talk to me or she's waiting to tell me that she has a boyfriend. And I'm just like, okay, well, I'll see you around. Or I'm like, yo, we could be friends. Or I just leave, you know? But what you guys don't do is you don't know the difference between a girl that's interested and not interested. So because of that, you approach every single girl, right? And you keep shooting your shot thinking it's going to be like a Denmo video, like, oh, I don't know you, but I want to. You're just thinking that like that one secret cool line that doctors hate is going to work every single time. It doesn't. Because of that, you're not learning. You're just spamming lines, okay? What you need to do is talk to enough girls where you're having basic conversations. And when a girl starts to show you signs she's interested in you, like she's fixing your hair, making eye contact, she's asking you questions, she's stopping whatever she's doing and giving her full body direction facing you, Now she's actually interested. Now you can tell, oh, she actually would like me to potentially ask for her number. This is when you know the difference between her just being friendly and her actually being attracted to you. And that is when you start to talk about a date. And here's the thing. Most guys, they instantly go, okay, well, uh, let's, let me give, can I have your Instagram and give me your number? No, no, no. Why would she give you her number before you guys have established what you're going to do together? That doesn't make any sense. What do you want to just text me? Fuck that, bro. What you need to do is talk about activities you guys can do together. So like, oh, so what do you usually do on weekends? Oh, that's cool, actually. I was thinking about going there this weekend, too. Yeah, how about this? How about we go do that? How about we go bowling? How about we go get sushi? Whatever it is, doesn't matter. If she's into doing that with you, then she'll be like, yeah, okay, that sounds good. Take my number. Or you can be like, okay, cool. Here, take my number, right? But first, you need to get her to imagine herself with you doing the thing together then that is a date that you're agreeing to. Then the number makes sense, okay? Now, the reason 
that I'm preaching this to you, and it might seem basic. You're probably watching this video like, oh, Demo, you've already said the same shit a million times before. Yeah, it's because it works, okay? You just need to be able to execute this fast, okay? Let's think about it logistically. 30 days, all right? If you spend one hour a day over the next 30 days, cold approaching, looking for areas where there's girls, going up and talking to strangers, guys and girls, and then eventually having good interactions with girls where you can tell that they're interested in you based on the way they respond to you starting a conversation with them and the things you talk about, then you suggest an activity for a date. If they have a boyfriend, they say, well, I'd love to, but I have a boyfriend, or they say they're not interested. But the ones that don't, they're like, yeah, sure, I'd do that. You exchange numbers with them, and then you guys go on a date together. And then you have a rotation of two to three girls that you're going on dates with. And then the one that you really like, that you could see yourself spending more time with, you choose her and you tell the others, hey, I don't want to see you anymore. Or, you know, you leave it open, you just ghost her or whatever. Now, within literally three to four weeks, you have a girlfriend. And now you don't have to go on a dry spell because you can consistently get some poon a couple days a week. Every single guy watching this video right now or girl that's in a relationship they are at this point too. They're like, okay, I wanted to have sex regularly with somebody I like. So I put myself out there. Sometimes it takes a couple months, but eventually you get into a relationship. Now you're with that girl that you like and you have sex a couple times a week. So no more dry spell. You got poon coming in steady. But guess what? Guys would rather like half-ass it, get dating apps, fail, jerk off, play video games, not go out of their house more than like one hour per week. And they'll rather do that for like six months to a year before finally accidentally stumbling into a girl and getting a date set up than just getting it over with as fast as possible. One hour per day for 30 days. Dude, I'm literally challenging you right now. One hour per day of cold approach for the next 30 days. I'm telling you, you'll have a date within five or six days. Okay. But most of you guys don't want to do that, which is why when I offer my product, Socializer School, that teaches you how to attract and get girls within 60 to 90 days, get a fulfilling relationship. Also, we just added a course on how to build a social circle, how to start a YouTube channel. I'm continuously adding a lot of value for you guys. So you should definitely join Socializer School. We got more than just girl shit in there. It's like an amazing course. And we also have weekly Q and A's and you can talk to me and you know, a bunch of cool stuff in there. Guys would rather throw their money at that and then have me tell them the same thing on a weekly Q and A than if they just were like, hey, why don't I just leave my house an hour a day? I swear, half you guys, you just wanna have me in your corner as if like you're in the boxing ring and I'm there like, oh, throw the left hook. Yep, yep, keep your hand up. You know, you guys want me there in the corner fighting with you. I get it, it feels good. But like, you don't actually have to join the course to do all of this. It's just a matter of if you spend money on something, you're like, okay, now that I spend money on it, I have to watch the course modules. I have to show up to the Q and A's and I have to get my money's worth. So if you join my program or you buy my product and then you don't leave your house and you don't get any girls, you're going to be fucking angry at yourself. You're going to be like, fuck, I wasted my money. And that is exactly what it takes for guys to actually go and approach girls. Sometimes you just have to throw money in a program. You have to give money to a guy and be like, all right, now I paid for it. I actually have to do it. And that's the way I set up the program. There's challenges. There's homework. It's like school. There's tests. There's like, you know, assignments and stuff like that. And there's like a system that you follow. And then once you practice it, learn it, and you can replicate this with guys and girls, you can build social circles, you can get a girlfriend, and you can solve your dry spell. So now that you have the proven time you've done this in the past, like, okay, I followed Denmo system. I got a new group of friends. I got a girl that I can have sex with. Maybe you got a couple girls you can have sex with. Next time you encounter yourself in a situation where you're in a new city, you get out of a relationship or something happens that causes you to have a dry spell, you're like, oh, I know what to do now. And then you can send me an email being like, thanks, Denmo. You solved my dry spell once again. And once you have sex, you can worry about all the important things in life, like finding a fulfilling job, starting a business, getting really good at some kind of hobby of yours, like kickboxing or guitar or piano or whatever. There's a million different things you could be doing besides girls. But until you find something that allows you to get that primitive caveman desire of busting a nut into an attractive woman that you're really attracted to, you're gonna be distracted from doing all that cool stuff. How are you gonna save the rainforest? How are you gonna save the baby whales? How are you gonna, you know, retire your parents if you can't fucking have sex? You know what I mean? So again, I get it, it sucks being a dude, you want a nut all the time. I don't know about you, maybe you're unhealthy, 
I know there's every, every once in a while there's a guy in the comments that lets everybody know how infertile he is by saying like, oh, I don't even care about women. It's like, wow, bro, you should go to a doctor and get your fucking body checked out because clearly something's wrong, okay? Maybe you're attracted to trees or something, but I'm sick and tired of these guys that are like pretending they don't have sex drive. The only reason any of us even exist, the only reason there's houses, roads, businesses, like... The only reason any kind of structure or civilization exists at all is because as humans, we want to reproduce and we channel that sex drive into other things. All right. This book I read, the reason this guy wrote it is so he could get money so he could get pussy. The reason you have friends is so that you know that other people like you and they give you the confidence and you're like, you know what? I would also like a friend that only I get to have sex with. That's also an attractive girl with a cute face and a big booty, right? Why do we do anything? Sex. Everything in life is about sex until you get sex. Then it's about life. And I'll end it here. I remember one time there was this girl I was seeing. She fit all the boxes. She was gorgeous. She had, you know, uh, really interesting hobbies that I was like, you know, very interested as well. She liked the same type of music as me. She had this job. She was like doing something involving like sick kids, you know, like just all the, all the boxes checked. Right. And I was like, so into this girl. And every Friday when I finished work, I was like, oh man, I can't wait to go over and bang this chick. You know, I'd go over to her house, we'd order pizza, she'd have like the best snacks and we'd, you know, put on Netflix and we'd just have marathons of sex, right? Anyways, I would be hooking up with her. And I remember one day, because this happened a couple times in a row, I saw her. I was like, wait a second, there's a pattern here. I remember the one time I went over to visit her and I came, right? And then afterwards, I'm just like, I feel like playing guitar. And she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I feel like playing guitar. I think I'm going to go. And we're both like naked here. I'm just like, oh, like I just, I just dropped one. Right. And we're like naked on the couch. (sighs) You know, her mom lives upstairs. So like we're in the basement. So like she knows what we're doing down there. But um, she's like, okay, well, you know, do you have a guitar? I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go home right now and play guitar. And she's like, you're going to go home? Why? I was like, want to play guitar and she's like oh like well yeah go get your guitar and bring it back I'm like no I just want to go home and play guitar and she's like okay yeah and I was all right and I left and I remember driving home and I'm like I can't believe I drove all the way out here and I was thinking about this girl all week just to get some pussy and it's like as soon as I came I'm like wait a second what do I actually like doing I like writing songs I like playing guitar and I like being by myself at home so I'm gonna go home and do that and it took me that happening over and over again for me to realize that. And now I think that there's a healthy balance. Like, you know, I love sparring. I love kickboxing, but like I don't spar eight hours a day. I do it a couple times a week and I go light. I'm not trying to get brain damage. Right. And same thing with sex. Like I have sex now a couple times a week, sometimes if I want to a couple times a day, but it's like, you know, I don't need to anymore. There's a balance in life. And I think that far too many men find themselves in a position where they don't have balance. And because of that, they crave sex so much that they end up avoiding it. You know, all these guys online that talk about how they don't want to have sex, it's because they can't get sex. So they have to basically decide that they don't want it anymore. Right. That's one of the laws of power. Grow contempt for what you cannot get. You know what I mean? All the people that say, oh, like money doesn't matter. Yeah, they're poor. Of course they say that, you know, oh, modern women are the worst. Yeah, dude, if you were banging baddies then you wouldn't think modern women were the worst. You'd be like, oh, modern women are actually, like some of them are annoying, but like not my girl. My girl's cool. Why? Because you approach the right girl and you guys are cool. And she's like, again, you don't have to date these bad girls. There's great girls out there and you don't have to be on a dry spell. You can get some poon, dude. It might take a little bit of work. It might take a lot of work for a couple of weeks, but it's like, how about this, bro? One hour per day for 30 days or one hour per week for 30 weeks? I know what I would do. I would rather do 30 days. You'd get way quicker results. Okay. Think about it this way. Let's say you were training to fight somebody. Okay. And they trained one hour per day for 30 days. You trained one hour per week for, you know, four weeks. They would whoop your ass. Why? Because they were able to do 30 hours in the same time. You could only do four hours. It's the same thing with dating. So if you want to end a dry spell instead of like, like, why do dry spells even exist? Because you go a long period of time. The fact you're on a dry spell probably tells me you only approach girls one hour a week, if that. But if you approach girls one hour a day, you'll either go crazy and just 
completely drop off the face of the earth or by about the seventh or eighth day, you'll get some leads. You'll be like, you know what? I got girls now. Problem solved. And then you don't have to approach girls anymore because you got your puss automated, baby. Okay? So that's how you end a dry spell. Now, if you want to join my program that essentially helps you get girls, build social circles, start a YouTube channel, like all the dopest stuff, trust me, really good program. You can join Socializer School. Link is in the description below. But in the meantime, let me know about that time that I saved you from that burning fire and about that other time where... I removed that bullet from your urethra and that other time that I went and spoke a bunch of Japanese to an ancient master and because of that, he allowed you to get free ownership of land on an island in Japan, okay? Because I want you guys to be grateful for all the things I do for you. So please tell me down below what I did for you recently and uh, suck my cock. See you next time.